certainly when you look across the Commonwealth, there's no way that we can move forward unless we acknowledge the past. And I think so many people have, have done such an amazing, incredible job of acknowledging the past and trying to right those wrongs that I think we all acknowledge on here that there is so much more still to do. It's not going to be easy. And in some cases, it's not going to be comfortable, but it needs to be done because guess what? Everybody benefits. So I think there's a hell of a lot that we together need to acknowledge, but I only see, I only see hope and optimism in the fact that we, we could only do this together. We have to, in this moment in time, say, we're going to have to be a little uncomfortable right now mm -hmm. because it's only in pushing through that discomfort that we get to the other side of this and find the place, as you're pointing out, where a high tide raises all ships. Mm -hmm. Equality does not put anyone on the back foot. It puts us all on the same footing, which is a fundamental human right. And that's what we're talking about here. Um, Adelahi, I would like to come to you now to discuss, you know, what was, does it look like when we all come together to try and tackle these issues of racism and injustice and systemic injustice? And what is the opportunity that you see, especially with the role of young people and the important part they have to play? I think, yes, it does make sense for us to acknowledge where we've come from. But I also think we sometimes forget that we're never, ever really the first to ever want to create social change. There are generations that predate us that have tried to do this. Um, and I think one of the best ways for younger generations, younger activists who are coming into this space, one of the best steps to take is to first acknowledge that and to study the efforts of those who predate you. The activists who are older than you, the, the, the indigenous leaders, for example, who fought for these causes, because it's really a case of not only understanding the problem as it existed in the past, but also the efforts of those who've tried to solve it and to work with people who are in systems of power, those particular allies, to develop these intergenerational uh, forms of allyship. And I think number two is, if we really, really want to tackle systemic issues, is to realize they're upheld by systems. <laughs> and so mm -hmm. to even think systemically, diagnose problems systemically, not at the surface level, but really get into the core of what are the cultural forces? What are the political factors that uphold this particular issue?